Hi, this is Mr. Pojo from Cambridge Virtual Academy of AUHSD, and this is our seventh grade CBA Science Pathway, uh, or essentially our instruction for the entire year, week by week, or what we call module by module. Uh, I want to start first by saying I know there's a lot of color here, um, but there are hyperlinks in this entire document. In fact, if you take a look at the bottom of the YouTube page, I'm going to have this document accessible. So you could view this document and be able to see any of the documents that are hyperlinked here. Uh, so I'll go one by one to do a brief explanation of each module. Uh, I do want to front load and say that uh, when it comes to this lesson plan and design, um, I'm following our module lesson design at CVA. Uh, however, I do have my own unique color coding and um, tentative timelines that are obviously applicable to uh, science into Mr. Pojo's class. Um, so with that said, um, sorry if the colors are overwhelming. Uh, so much of this instruction came in collaboration with my seventh grade CVA partner last year, Mr. Rich Padilla, aka Kentucky. Uh, so big shout out to Rich as well. But a number of these uh, modules also come from the community of AUHSD and so many different um, de uh, learning development opportunities that I had over um, you know, my career as an educator. So module one, if you click uh, right here, you could actually see the entire module and I'll show an example for module two. Module one is about netiquette introductions. We call this onboarding week at CVA. There's no um, specific instruction in science. It's more so about community building and some of the important online learning standards that uh, we want to front load at the start of the year for our students. Uh, number two or module two is on favorite animals. So this is again to continue on with week two of community building. If you take a look, uh, this is the example of what our modules or my modules in CVA science looks like. They are all very similar. They actually stick with the same color coding. So I'll have an objective. Uh, I'd like to give a tentative timeline, even though our students have an entire week to complete their assignments. I like to give a tentative timeline to kind of keep them on pace. I keep a... Um, Bimoji classroom and those kind of developed and I had some more fun with those uh, throughout each module. The second page are going to be links uh, for instruction, slides, sometimes I have specific videos and I number those uh, by point one which is this actual document. I have Google Slides that are accompanied with it, uh, point two and again for any module so 3.2 would be module three point two signifying my Google Slides for the week. And the point threes will always be our discussion. I have a discussion that's focused on our topic that we're learning. And then after that, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, or any point five, excuse me, point four, point five, point six are going to be the specific assignments for that module, whether it be Google assignments, uh, ed puzzles, or other outside programs um, that work in conjunction with our instruction. And then at the very bottom, on the third page, on the third page, I'll also give uh, detailed daily tasks. Uh, this uh, works nice, especially as I got through the year later, uh, with sending out daily emails to my students. It gave them a good reminder of, hey, if you're on task for completing your stuff for the week, uh, this is what you could, should be completing today. This is what you should be completing on Monday, on Tuesday, etc. And then what to expect in their grade book in Aries uh, with the points and the specific um, category for which they're being graded. So that's in general what, uh, and I like to use GIFs everywhere too. I think uh, my sizing was off on this one. I gotta go resize it, but I like to use GIFs um, here and there along the way. So now for each module by topic, and I will try to make this as condensed and to the point as possible. Uh, if you wanna take a look at each module individually, you could feel free again to go down and check out the description in the YouTube video below that will have a link to this document. So uh, number two is on favorite animal. That is an introduction and community building piece where students are also learning how to use platforms like Flipgrid to post their favorite animal. Uh, we introduce this concept of the CER, uh, which are claims, evidence, and reasoning so that we start scientific writing. And that's module two. Module three is on measurement and scientific sketching. This is where students will, uh, I have a fun game where I ask them to measure uh, different things, uh, depending if it's in my classroom or if I'm going mobile. Um, but I have a, a, a fun guessing game in meters uh, using the metric system and talking about how measurement is used uh, in science. 
And we also talk about scientific sketching, and this is very important and something else that we'll see, just like claims, evidence, and reasoning all throughout our instruction for the year. Module four and five are the San Diego Zoo Animal Inquiry Project. I got this specific module from a PD at the San Diego Zoo. Uh, it's pretty cool. Students get to watch a webcam for 30 minutes and then we make observations and then students screencast, and this is where I introduce uh, submitting video work, screencast a scientific inquiry about a comparative question that they had for a specific animal. I believe there's like 14 different animals they could choose from. You could take a look here and see some student work of their final product for their San Diego Zoo project. And that's pretty much the uh, beginning of our intro unit, or I call it the intro unit. And then I jump right into engineering and analysis in a very unique project called Coding Corona. This project uh, stems from a training that I did. It's got to be like 10 years ago. It was in collaboration with a group called Project Guts and the NRC, the National Research Council of the National Academy of Sciences. They were actually the developers of the first steps of NGSS. So that was really fun. There's so many different computer science uh, standards and learning techniques and cross-cutting concepts. This is one of these projects right here from module five all the way to module 11. It's a six week project. Uh, this is one of those you, I would highly suggest you cannot just start with your students and learn at the same time. This is one of those you wanna do the entire Coding Corona project before to understand um, coding. We use the platform Star Logo Nova. And the goal of this project is to create a simulation where there is a disease spread model. Uh, I obviously adapted it to what is happening today with the coronavirus. And I had students uh, deep dive into a specific population of their choice, whether it be, um, you know, Italy or the United States or Orange County, uh, Argentina. They got to pick their own population and then uh, give a model of the transmission rate of coronavirus in that population, and then the fun part, uh, theorizing what they think would happen in the future in the coming year with coronavirus. It's really fun getting to look at um, our videos after. And you can see student videos here. Uh, I actually have students screencast along the way so I could see their actual code. So they're screencasting for a performance task. I call them performance task, the big thing I want to see for the week. But they'll screencast all throughout the week and then um, or all throughout each module. And then they have their final video. So if you want to check out their final videos, they're right. there. And then on module 12, we jump into chemistry in the environment. We'll do an element research project for one module. And then we start the concept of our, our chemistry superhero project. Uh, this is the birth child or the instructional birth child of uh, Mr. Padilla. Um, I absolutely love this unit. Students got to be creative and make up a origin story based history, which I soon realized that's pretty much how every Marvel movie um, and the, the Marvel characters are uh, developed. Uh, but they make their own superhero. They get to write a story. Uh, one of the great things about this project we're already talking about at CBA this year is collaborating with English and also with our multimedia class for an actual design of a real comic. So it should be real fun uh, if you want to check out students' comics right here, uh, their video comics, so you could check out some student work there. Module 15 is on face change and modeling. I've had a number of students say this was their absolute favorite module. I do not show any of this module beforehand. I want students to come in with a blank canvas and we get back to that scientific sketching. Um, I actually got this instruction from a PD opportunity maybe five or six years ago with Jessica Yet and the famous DD man. And this, this really highlights the idea of modeling and, and thinking about um, physical change with salinity. Um, really fun, there's a, 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 an assessment where students are modeling what they see the very beginning of the week. Uh, obviously it's going to be a real, real rough draft model. And then after learning uh, the concepts of salinity, through gizmos, through their own ice cube parent lab, where they uh, maintain an ice cube and keep it at uh, you know frozen in a, a solid for as long as possible. And then at the very end of the module, they redraw their thinking and reassess their model that they drew the first time of uh, what a brinicle really is. Module 16 is on air quality. This is where students looked at five different cities 
It took a look at the last year of its air quality, identified the five worst days or the five worst time frames of the air quality for that city, and then went back and looked at the city's history to see if there was a connection to what was happening environmentally to uh, correlate with why there was high HOI levels. Uh, for example, uh, California fires, um, but two different reasons why HUI levels could change. Uh, that's air quality index. Ocean acidification, uh, that was a, another uh, enjoyable one for me. I'm a really big fan of the ocean. Um, there's a really cool simulation that has to do with the Bay of Fundy uh, up in the Northeast, and they talk about the that area. I like to kind of do my modules on um, physical places, so that was fun uh, visiting, quote unquote, the Northeast and talking about the Bay of Fundy and understanding how um, tragic ocean acidification is to our shelled organisms. The midterm for the year was actually a reflection. Since a lot of this is, is project-based learning, I had students go through and explain each one of the five C's in a project that correlated to um, their strength of that five C. So where were students most collaborative? Where were they most creative? And then reflecting on their five C's within specific projects that were done throughout the semester. Uh, so if you want to check out those videos, they're right there. Uh, 19 and 20, starting the second semester, we started the second semester as a collaborative group in the seventh grade level. I chose or we chose to do oil rigs in particular, uh, or particularly due to the concept of civic action and learning. This, for me, um, is my passion for civic action. I think it's something that humans don't really talk about or aren't aware of, and it's so crucial to our ocean environment and also our energy. So students got a chance to uh, come with me on a scuba dive on the Ellen and Ellie sister rigs right off Long Beach and take a look at the ecosystem below and understanding how oil rigs uh, connect a lot of different ecosystems. Ultimately, students completed a, a brochure where they identified the important ecological challenges and information about oil rigs and the most important they gave me their analysis on what they think they should that should happen with these, I believe it's about 23 or 25 oil rigs off the coast of Southern California when they're being decommissioned over the next, uh, some in a couple of years, some as far as 15 or 20 years. So what should we do with those oil rigs? Um, let's see, we're on number 21 here, module 21. This is on ecosystem and food webs. This is where I took the Savannah food web and students used a Google slide to actually create a picture food web. Uh, that was really fun. A lot of students like that and uh, got a chance to manipulate uh, photos within a food web. Invasive species is another favorite of mine. Students got to pick their own invasive species and create a flip grid about their impact on their native and invasive ecosystems. I highlight the lionfish in this instruction, particularly, again, going back to the ocean um, and some of the, the fun I've had with uh, spearfishing lionfish. So that was my model for invasive species, but it was really great seeing students. You could check them out on their flip grid here. Ecosystem and bee pollinators, we are bees at CVA. So we had students learn about bees and, and how important they are as uh, an ecosystem engineer. And ultimately their performance task was to literally build a 3D bee drone design and explain why they made that model. I believe uh, that project actually goes back, if I remember correctly, to Brookers Junior High with Mr. Padilla. A uh, really fun time, and students got to be really creative with that module. Then we got to go on to our next unit. Uh, that was uh, Human Impact Ecosystems and Environmental Action. Now at Module 24, we're looking at energy sources and human impact on energy in the environment. We took a look at fresh water and the human impact on fresh water systems. So students a freshwater river or lake around the world and explained uh, human impact. There was no large performance task on this. The next module, 25, was on water tower engineering design. Oh, by the way, these uh, hyperlinks here are for videos too. So again, sometimes I add videos to my modules uh, and you can see. Uh, engineering water tower design was great. Students Pretty much picked up a bag with straws. I believe there's 50 straws off the top of my head. I think 25 uh, pipe cleaners and 25 paper clips. And students had to put a golf ball 
uh, as tall or as high as they could on a water tower that they designed. So the golf ball uh, symbolizing the water tower. And it was really fun seeing students go through the engineering process. Um, I'll link it here, but there's a flip grid where students actually showed their design and talked about uh, their challenges with engineering their tallest water tower. Um, then we went to water towers and infrastructure and we really talked about what are water towers and why are they so important? If you know anything about New York City, you know that uh, with water towers specifically, that water towers have to be at the sixth or seventh floor um, or story of a building. If a building is taller than six or seven stories, then you'll see they have a water tower and there's a reason for that. And we got to learn about infrastructure and then students for their performance tasks went and found a place around the world, uh, anywhere in the world using Google Earth, where they thought the community or the city could benefit from having a water tower. Uh, earth and plates, tectonic plates or geothermal energy, we used gizmo or plate tectonics here. I also included some information and videos from my own uh, scuba dive in Silfra, Iceland, where I got a chance to dive in between the North American and the European plates and talked about how fresh water actually connects in that environment. And Rock Cycle and Pangea to wrap up uh, energy sources and um, environment. This was really fun. Students got a chance to play a game. I don't quite remember where I got this one from, but students essentially roll dice and they are. Uh, a rock in the rock cycle, whether it be in a volcano, lava, maybe they're in a riverbed, but each roll of the dice, um, you know, fast forwards millions of years to where that rock would be in its rock cycle. And then students got to reflect on where they went as the rock through the rock cycle. And uh, during this time, actually during uh, modules 22 to 28, uh, English and history at CVA were working on their soapbox speeches. Uh, which was really important because we worked on this collabor collaboratively in a baton passing uh, multi-content project. And this is where students completed their soapbox speech. And then in module 29 to 32, which was a month or a four week module, um, I definitely don't want to say we took a break from science because we got a chance to dive into students' passions and how science uh, has implications in all their passions. But students took their soapbox speeches uh, Mr. Padilla and I sorted students out by like-minded theme, put them in groups so that they could collaboratively come up with a new driving question and then create a three-minute PSA highlighting civic action on problem that they wanted to see change in the world or in their community. Uh, and, and it was really fun. I had a great time going through this process. Um, I've done this before. Uh, not digitally. If you want to take a look at students' presentations, uh, they're all here linked to all their final videos. These videos were also submitted to our AUHSD Film Festival. And it was just a real fun time seeing students really diving into their passion. There's not specific assignments here. Um, it was more about managing their growth and their project. Uh, each student had a particular role in their group, whether it's a project manager, a designer, an uh, editor. Uh, but they all work collaboratively to get that final three minute video. And if you want to check them out, they're all right here. And to wrap up the year, our last five modules, uh, again, looking back at natural processes, uh, we completed an energy and renewables match profile where students a renewable energy and created a match, like yes, the, the website match profile, where they would explain why their renewable energy source would be a good solution for the future. So if you want to get a chance to see their flip grid, we had some fun with that, looking at renewable or different types of renewable energies where students picked a renewable energy and then learned from one another in their flip grids. Mining and reclamation and uh, love canal all has to do with this concept of reclamation and chocolate chip cookie mining. Uh, that was a really fun lab. We did that in office hours. Uh, you time students and uh, they purchased equipment, AKA, uh, paper clips and toothpicks to be able to remove chocolate chips, which represented their iron ore. Uh, there's a really fun uh, business side to this lab where they see if their mining operation was profitable to get into that entrepreneurship. But I really, really, really enjoy chocolate chip cookie mining. I think I've been doing that for a number of years in science. And um, at the very end, our last couple of units, 35 is on sand. And blue hole, I brought in uh, blue hole diving. 
Uh, sand is a very, very uh, important um, compound and mineral that is used in the making of concrete. So we talked about specific places where there's actually an extreme human impact on freshwater sand in riverbeds. And students got a chance to understand that concept and how sand is actually an indicator for types of weather changes and possibly global warming in the future by taking a look at one of my uh, favorite scientific videos that has to do with extreme blue hole diving and its connection to the change of our climate and finding clues to the future in these very unique environments called blue holes that are mostly in the uh, Caribbean and Florida area uh, with that li uh, soft limestone. And our last unit, when I say our last besides our um, final learning reflection, uh, going back to the San Diego Zoo, we took a look at the mountain yellow-legged frog population. They are endangered species that lives uh, right here in our local mountains, uh, San Joaquin and Big Bear Mountain. And students got a chance to understand this species um, in, in depth, understand how the San Diego Zoo went through the process of, um, the frozen zoo is absolutely amazing, but went through the process of repopulating the species and how they monitor the growth uh, individually and as a population of the species. And students um, got a chance to pick, again, using a Google Earth system, which specific environment uh, of three specific locations in the San Joaquin Mountains where they would repopulate the frog if they were the San Diego Zoo program. Um, they had to take a look at different things from ownership of land, potential for wildfires, access to water, uh, walking trails for humans, and students ultimately had a discussion where they argued where was the best location to repopulate the mountain yellow-legged frog. And again, that's from the San Diego Zoo Collaborative. Lastly, students finished up the year with, again, just like the semester, a 5C learning reflection. Um, I can't say enough about how important these were for students. And also for me as a teacher, I got to see which one of our projects or our modules throughout the year was the biggest impact for students, how they felt about their process of collaborating, communicating, critically thinking, being creative, where they um, connected with that character and compassion. Um, so I haven't hyperlinked that, but I'll make sure to get that here sooner or later. Um, but that is pretty much how seventh grade CVA science completed instruction throughout the year. This is a working document. So you'll notice that my modules kind of, I think I want to say like modules four to 10, the color coding or the way uh, the organization of these modules developed over time. So I'm starting back over with how I ended in module 37 and I'm already uh, implementing that, um, I guess, the module style of Google, uh, of sharing the Google document with instructions with students. And again, um, this is a working document. Uh, this is accessible to any teacher. I don't believe that education or educational opportunities should be monetized. So please enjoy these at your leisure. Um, you can make copies, or if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me. I'm Mr. Poggio underscore R at A-U-H-S-D dot U-S. Uh, with that said, make sure to subscribe and like and click the follow button. Thanks so much for sticking around for this long video. That's 7th Grade Science in a Nutshell. Have a wonderful day. Mr. Poggio, peace.